morning everyone. Of all the morning to go on a road trip, <laughs> I pick one of the worst. It's like yesterday was uh, icy rain and uh, the, the rig that I was driving was going left to right on the on the highway. It had problem uh, following the road because it was ice, like literally. And uh, this morning it's snowing. It's literally snowing. And uh, right now it's not so bad because it's not like pouring snow, but it's uh, it's gonna get there. It's going to get there, seriously. So this morning to work, I have multiple things to remember before I leave. Hopefully I won't get distracted by anyone. I have, uh, I need some Velcros. I need cylinders, specific size cylinders. Shit, it's green and it's, uh, you know when the light is green and you just want that speed up, and you know that there's a radar with a camera. Oh, that's it. Oh, awesome. I almost passed on a red light. The whole point of me getting up early is, well, somewhat early, is to make sure that I'm I'm in advance. I'm I'm, I'm early to work. Today, just uh, until noon, I have about three hours of driving to do, three plus hours. And that's just within the first two jobs there, an hour 40 apart each. And then, and oh, that's like hoping that the, the first job that I'm gonna do, uh, it's gonna be easy, hopefully. It's not gonna be too long. Uh, I can't stay there for two hours, it's gonna ruin my day. The other one is pretty easy as well, fully, because I didn't see jack shit about the other one. Yesterday I spent, uh, when I got home, when I finally got home around uh, three, three o'clock, uh, I was eating my uh, my dinner because I didn't have time to have, to have dinner. I didn't have time at all. And uh, I finished working at home because I was making phone calls calling my customer to tell them that I was going to be there. And uh, midday today, or by the end of the day, around three o'clock, so I'm going to have to start making phone calls and warning my customers that I'm going to be there tomorrow. The people for Friday, they they all been called and uh, I left messages. So they should be aware that I'm going to be there on uh, Friday. If they don't call back, it's too bad, for, too bad so sad for them. Let's just hope that uh oh, wait. Fait ton angle mort. People are so dumb. Like do your blind spot. Uh, this is like the perpetual problem of everyone on the road. They can't merge. It's it's like this is the first thing you learn when you're here in Quebec when you're learning to drive. They teach you how to merge. The first thing the teacher does is take you on the road and makes you go between lane, between cars. He wants to stress you up so well that you get the notion of merging with your flasher. Mirror, flasher, blind spot, go. That simple. People don't grasp that. They're coming on the highway and they're like that. They don't look to see who's coming. They're just like that. I'm coming on the highway. Get out of my way. That's not how, it, that's not how things work. When you're coming on the highway and you're doing the curve to come on the highway, you look, you look to see who's coming and see with who you're going to be able to merge. Because some jackass, they don't let you in. There's a, a highway exit on Highway 20, when you go from Highway 20 to Highway 30, where two, two lanes of car wants to go at the same place at the same time. And you have to make sure you do a perfect zip. 
A zip means you're merging everybody at the same time. You let me in, you let me out. You let me in, you let me out. People don't grasp that. Each time it comes to a crawl. People are that dumb. I'm on the road every day. I see that every day. And when I'm in Montreal, that's even worse. In Montreal, they literally don't let you pass. Let's see, as an example, I'm coming here. That truck's not going so fast, but the truck is looking to see who's coming. And he knows the, the, the way is clear. But some morning here, it's clogged, it's full of cars. And people are coming and they're just gonna ram you. I'm coming on the highway, no flasher. Anyway, back to topic. Uh, I made the God device. I finally built it. I tried it and weird effect had that happen. Uh, one night I was using it, I was putting my hand over the magnet and I was feeling a tingly sensation in the middle of my hand, like some sort of energy was going into me. And the fun part is, I didn't, it didn't felt negative energy at all. So, trying to keep in mind that energy and the next night I tried to do the same thing again, but I didn't feel it. I think it was probably a one-time deal or leaving the machine on for a while was pretty charged up until I touch it. But the thing is, uh, it's bringing me good fortune. Uh, I want to believe that the laws of causalities are anything. They're anything if predictable. So I want to believe that the machine did help in some way, some luck. Just as an example, remember when I told you that uh, the lottery ticket I've been using, uh, a new series of numbers that I've been using, uh, have brought me luck. Uh, I've been winning non-stop for the last nine days now. Not big amount, but $2, $4, $10. Uh, if I calculate correctly, so far that ticket pay me about $50, $58 for a $4 ticket. For nine days so it's not bad all right go 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 so either the machine does bring locks so i'll see i'll see for future result but like I, whatever it endow me with i'm happy with next step i'm going to focus on is healing energy uh try to see if that machine can generate healing energy. Uh, my uh, tendonitis has been going higher lately. And uh, at night it's getting more difficult to fall asleep with the ringing in my ear at that level. Uh, I need a lot of background noise to cover that earring, that ringing in my ear. So I'm gonna try to use a machine to fix that wish and focus on healing my ears that would be one of the main feature and uh, another note as well um, on the forum the time travel forum uh, people are really really getting on board now as more positive we are heading towards a a common ground and uh, we, we, we try, we're we trying to tell what everybody did what what experiment they did and what result was and try to we're gonna try to conglomerate our effort and uh, our result to see what we can build I'm not saying that I know the recipe to make time travel what I what I believe to be the right thing or to be all the components all the components that needs to be uh, for all I know that could be a dimensional jump a, dim a dimensional jumper for all I for all intended purpose that's what it could be not a time travel at all you could just end up in another timeline and uh, instead of instead of making a time travel machine you're making a dimensional machine and you're getting lost into other dimension so 
meant something else, you know. Sometime in your dream, in the dream world, you're dreaming of things and you're, you, you just think that it's the, your imagination or the things, but actually your soul is actually traveling through times or other dimension and you're seeing the future and see you're seeing other things in other places and uh, that is a common occurrence uh, and uh, when you're using uh, the HDR uh, it will increase that capabilities and uh, you will just need to lay on your back and focus where you want to see and make sure that you give your brain enough chemical energy to take you there and what I mean by chemical energy I don't mean taking drugs but I mean eating something that stimulate REM sleep in my case is uh, what helps me stimulate my dreams the most is usually a medium glass of milk and uh, some chocolate covered cranberries or black chocolate that will at the night stimulate my dreams for a period about two to four hours I will have access to other zone in my mind and see other things. I'm not saying that's the case for everybody else, but for me, when I have other dimensional dreams or time dreams, that's what the, that's what the case is. Whatever you see in those dream zone, and you think it's real, sometimes it is real. You're uh, when, when you're traveling into the future, you're either traveling to your future self, or somebody from your family, or uh, yeah, your future self. Uh, for me, one of the most vivid time that that happened, I'm gonna tell you that as a quite spectacular moment in my life, is uh, I wake up and. Uh, I was in a, a classic Quebecer house. I don't know where I was. And then I look at my hand and I could see that I didn't have my scars. So I knew I was someone else. And as I walked around the house, it was an empty apartment. Uh, a classic style of Quebecer house, empty apartment. It was empty and uh, the construction from the late 60s. And uh, I went through the window to the front of the house to see if there was any people on the street. And at that moment, when I looked outside, I was standing clearly in the windows. And I saw myself passing with a company truck. And I was glancing at myself in the window. So at that moment, I was watching myself, watching myself. And it was very early in the days of the company. Before we even had that truck. And uh, when we did have that truck, one day, one of my co-workers says, we're going to Grand Mer, which is north of Quebec. And uh, we say, we're going to do a road survey. So as, as we're driving to the town to go where we're going, I'm passing with that same truck and I'm looking up at the house and thinking how, how old style the place was. And then at one point I looked like this and I saw somebody looking at me through a window and I was looking at them. And that was me looking at me at that moment two years later so that was quite spectacular and this is what I'm saying you can time travel in your dreams but it takes practice I think I think I could build a basic time travel machine somewhat like an HDR that would not attract such negative energy like the HDR does uh, because when you use the HDR it attracts a whole lot of negative energy on your chakra when you're using that magnet towards your your chest uh, the magnet if you're if you would make an HDR uh, the magnet should not be outside it should be inside the machine as you're holding the machine I think that the two magnets could be on each side of the machine as you're holding it I, I don't think that any radio machine should be in contact with you you should be holding the machine and passing your energy through it, not her through you. Because what it does is that machine uh, opens a floodgate for negative energy and evil spirits that could attach themselves to you. 
which happened to me and uh, the Brass Art Experiment. Uh, not only the Brass Art Experiment, but uh, and uh, the when I did the I, I did the trial with a 6DI HDR for a, a shed. A MTV show called Rob and Dirt and Rob, Rob, Dirt, Rob and Big back in 2007. Uh, Rob and Big time travel episode. That was my episode. You can check that out on the, the internet. If you want to see something cool, you want to see me on TV talking with a, an average skater guy who th thinks he's a star, check for uh, Rob and Big time travel adventure. The entire episode. You're gonna see me in my younger days when I didn't have so much uh, gray hair. Everybody just got to work right now. All right, I'm at work. I'm gonna catch you guys later. And uh, let's hope and wish for the best for the next three days. There's gonna be a plenty of road to cover. And I hope like, my truck won't get any problems. I hate leaving my truck here, but the police station is just up the street, so I doubt people are dumb enough. All right, everyone. Take good care of yourself. Have a good day.